Okay, so let's do complex sensors now. Um, gyroscopes and accelerometers, it's sort of like the example that we're coming back to in this lecture, uh, can be used to detect the motion and especially the orientation of a robot. Gyroscopes used uh, to be built as macroscopic flywheels, the angular momentum of which would uh, maintain its orientation when mounted in gimbals. Today, microelectromechanical systems, MEMS, mimic this behavior so the, gyros so the gyroscopes can be inexpensively and conveniently placed on a printed circuit board, PCB. The following video has cool examples of, of MEMS sensors and then we'll skip, he does some Arduino coding stuff but I'll skip to the end and show you what he ends up doing. What? Hello, Dan Adokuski here from How to Make a... Okay, we'll just, I'll leave it like that then. Tronics.com. In this tutorial, we will learn how the MEMS accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer work and how to use them with the Arduino board. Also, with the processing development environment, we will make some practical applications using the sensors. First, let's briefly explain how each of these microelectromechanical systems or MEMS sensor work. We will start with the accelerometer. It measures acceleration by measuring change in capacitance. Its microstructure looks something like this. It has a mass attached to a spring, which is confined to move along one direction and fixed outer plates. So when an acceleration in the particular direction will be applied, the mass will move and the capacitance between the plates and the mass will change. Pretty this change cool, in huh? capacitance will be measured, processed and it will correspond to a particular acceleration value. Next is the gyroscope, which measures angular rate using the Coriolis effect. When a mass is moving in a particular direction with a particular velocity and when an external angular rate will be applied as shown with the green arrow, a force will occur as shown with the blue arrow which will cause perpendicular displacement of the mass. So similar to the accelerometer, this displacement will cause change in capacitance which will be measured, processed and it will correspond to a particular angular rate. The microstructure of the gyroscope looks something like this a mass that is constantly moving or oscillating and when an external angular rate will be applied a flexible part of the mass will move and make the perpendicular displacement okay now let's explain how the <laughs> magnetometer works got that? <laughs> it's kind of a blur but you get kind of the effect. idea actually almost 90% of the sensors on the market use the whole effect and here's how it works if we have a conductive plate like this and we set current to flow through it, the electrons would flow straight from one to the other side of the plate. Now if we bring some magnetic field near the plate, we would disturb the straight flow and the electrons would deflect to one side of the plate and the positive poles to the other side of the plate. This means that if we put a meter now between these two sides, we will get some voltage which depends from the magnetic field strength and its direction. The other 10% of the sensors on the market use the magnetoresistive effect. These sensors use materials that are sensitive to magnetic field, usually composed of iron and nickel. So when these materials are exposed to magnetic field, they change their resistance. Okay, now let's connect these sensors to the Arduino board and make some use of them. As an example, I will use the GY80 breakout board, which has the following sensors. ADXL 345 3 axis so wires. So he essentially connects this up uh, to an Arduino and then shows you how to write the code for the Arduino, which is, you know, neither here nor there. But yeah, right here, it gets interesting again. You need with the accelerometer. Here's an example of that, combining the gyro and the accelerometer data, as well as a complementary filter. I don't know if you can for see, but he's sitting there with the board, moving the board around, and it's recognizing that orientation. And he's using that, he, I think he's using a different type of filtering technique, not common filtering. But he's using, he's using a filtering technique to use both the accelerometer and the gyroscope data. 
simultaneously. Moving the results. So the data from the sensors and the Arduino board are sent to the processing development environment and they are used for controlling the orientation of the 3D object. You can find more details and the source codes for this example on my website. What's left now is okay. to see how... So that is all I wanted to show you from that. Um. How does a change in position change the capacitance? So... He doesn't show you all of it, um, but essentially there are uh, um, capacitance is governed by, in a typical capacitor, the distance between two plates, right? And so other types of orientations have capacitance as well. It doesn't have to be two plates. It can be just two um, wires even can have a capacitance in between them. So that capacitance um, changing, if you use that as a capacitor in a circuit, you can detect a change in capacitance. And that's sort of the basis of, of it. So it, it changes the distance between, it wasn't two plates, but it was between two structures, and that changes the capacitance. And the, and the reason that there were so many of them and not just like one is that it has a cumulative effect. It's more sensitive um, that way. And these MEMS devices are really cool and they construct them to be able to be manufactured easily. I mean, you can buy these things for not that much money. Uh, Ryan, you said you bought one of those IMUs. How much oh, was yeah. it? I mean, less than $5 probably. Yeah, it's like, it's kind of incredible. It's like all of that is on this one little board and it, it only costs you five bucks. <laughs> so, pretty sweet. Um, so, in a, in a certain sense, those uh, type, those sensors, gyroscope and accelerometer, are simple sensors. But in another sense, it, we have to you know call and filter and do all of these complex processing uh, procedures to find out what we want from them. So they're kind of a hybrid between our definition of simple and complex sensor. Um, Ultrasound or sonar sensors allow us to use echolocation in robotics. They emit a chirp and measure the time of flight for the chirp to return. It's great. It's like it's like a really uh, pretty reliable, pretty cheap way to go. Well, not cheap for a small device that you're doing hobby at home, but if you're building a robot, it's relatively cheap. Um, Compared to the um, uh, laser arrays, um, it can be it can be less expensive. Specular reflection is a reflection of the surface of an object being detected by sonar. Uh, smooth surfaces are hard to detect because the waves can be completely reflected away from the detector. Rough is better because it reflects back kind of in all directions. Uh, more sensors otherwise known as phased arrays, improve accuracy of sonar systems. Lasers, including laser cats, emit coherent beams of light, some visible, others not. Laser sensors can use the time of flight principles, um, uh, same as sonar, uh, but must use phase shift information for short distances because it's pretty fast. And for short distances, it's hard to detect Move it over a little bit. Oh, kind of, kind of yeah, did that happen? Has this been this way? Yeah. No, it was after you moved it for the video. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna.